Madam Speaker, I would like to address the queries raised by the members on the arts entertainment related amendments and the regulation of arts entertainment before Parliamentary Secretary Amrin Amin wraps up the debate on the bill. The PIMA was last amended in 2014 to improve the administration of arts entertainment licensing. Changes were made to more clearly, to, I beg your pardon, changes were made to more clearly delineate the licensing regimes for arts entertainment and public entertainment which fall under IMDA and police respectively and to ensure the relevance of the Act in view of changing trends in the provision of arts entertainment. For instance, we introduced the requirement for all arts entertainment to be classified regardless of the venue that they are held at, be it at public entertainment establishments licensed by the police, such as nightclubs, or at other venues, such as theatres and concert halls. In line with technological trends, we also made it a requirement for the live streaming of arts entertainment to a public venue to be licensed and classified. I thank Associate Professor Fatima Latif for recognizing the importance of increasing awareness of the regulation of arts entertainment. IMDA agrees that this is important and takes steps to ensure that the public and industry have access to such information. First, to inform members of the public interested in staging arts entertainment, IMDA publishes information on the licensing and classification of arts entertainment on its website. This includes the Arts Entertainment Classification Code, or AECC, information on the classification processes, as well as guidelines on the submission of licensing and classification applications. Second, whenever there are changes to be made to the regulatory framework, IMDA also consults the industry to inform, inform them and seek their views on the proposed changes. For instance, in, for the 2014 amendment that provides for the classification of arts entertainments regardless of where it is held at, IMDA held several engagement sessions with stakeholders including the Singapore Nightlife Business Association, SNBA, the Singapore Hotel Association, SHA, and major business precinct associations to inform them of the changes and also to consult them on ways to streamline regulatory processes for public entertainment establishments offering various forms of arts entertainment. For the current round of amendments, IMDA held a briefing to arts groups despite the amendments having little impact on their operations. As mentioned by Parliamentary Secretary Amrin, I mean, the current rounds of amendments will not result in any change to the existing arts entertainment content standards or the IMDA's arts entertainment classification and licensing processes. I'd also like to address the question from Ms. Denise Poir and Mr. Murali on the amendments to section 15A, which would allow IMDA to impose conditions as part of IMDA's classification of arts entertainment that comes under public entertainment license. The conditions are akin to the existing parts, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. The conditions are akin to the existing arts entertainment licensing conditions. Each arts entertainment con should be, I'm gonna start again. Each arts entertainment should be assessed on its own merit and different conditions may be required depending on the content and the form of the arts entertainment. The more common conditions imposed include the need to display classification ratings and consumer advice at the performance venue, and to prevent persons below the age of 18 from viewing arts entertainment rated R18. Such conditions are not new, and applicants generally have not had issues complying with them. Madam, if I may speak now on the government's approach to arts regulation in general, so as to give additional context to the changes that we are making, and also to reassure members that the amendments will in no way affect the regulation of arts entertainment. First, IMDA adopts an age-based classification framework where content is classified according to their suitability for different age groups. Classification serves to protect the young while allowing adults to make informed viewing choices on a wider range of arts content. In making its classification decisions, IMDA aims to strike a balance between reflecting generally accepted social norms while giving due consideration to the arts entertainment's artistic and educational merits. IMDA classifies arts entertainment according to the AECC. Content suitable for a general audience, including children, will be given a general rating while those that are targeted at a more mature audience can either be rated advisory, advisory 16, or R18. Content that goes beyond the R18 rating, for example, 
those which may undermine national interest, are likely to cause feelings of ill will between different racial or religious groups, or are excessive and or exploitative in their depictions, will be disallowed. The existing framework thus already addresses engineer Dr. Lee Biwa's concern about the misuse of arts entertainment as a means to offend or to promote radical ideology. Associate Professor Fatima Latif asked about the breaches that had occurred after the last review of Pima. Since IMDA took over the responsibility for enforcing and investigating breaches related to arts entertainment from the police in 2014, it has issued 26 advisories and warnings for breaches of license conditions and offenses under the Act. I would like to assure Ms. Thanalachmi that IMDA is cognizant that the forms and substance of arts entertainment are not static and will continue to evolve. IMDA keeps itself up to date with the developments in the arts scene through engaging stakeholders, such as the Arts Consultative Panel, the National Arts Council, and the arts community. IMDA also reviews the AEC guidelines, as well as its interpretation and application of the guidelines in consultation with stakeholders to ensure that it keeps up with changes and developments in artistic trends and community standards. Madam Speaker, the latest population survey on the arts released by National Arts Council last year shows that arts interest and attendance are at an all-time high in Singapore. This is a positive development, but it also means that with higher demand and therefore higher supply of arts entertainment, IMDA as a regulator will have its work cut out. However, through regular engagements and dialogues with the stakeholders, I believe that IMDA will continue to serve its role well in safeguarding the public space of arts entertainment, even as our art scene continues to become more diverse and vibrant. I support the bill, Madam Speaker.